So if you know a little bit of algebra and a little bit of geometry, well, this should be a pretty easy problem. Now, this problem involves a square and a triangle, and the question is we want to find the actual lengths of the square and triangle. And the only clue that we have is that the perimeters of each of these figures are equal. Now, if we take a look at the dimensions of the square, uh, the sides of the square are x, and the sides of the triangle um, are x, and then this one right here is x plus 1, and then this longest side here is 3x minus 5. Okay, so this is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, we'll walk through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. This is not going to be that difficult. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Again, as I indicated, this is not going to be that difficult. But the main thing is that you have to understand what the perimeter is. Okay, so the perimeter is the sum distance around a figure. So we, what we need to do, though, is express the perimeter of the square and the, tri uh, the triangle algebraically. Okay, so what would be the perimeter of the square? Well, it would be x plus x. Now, this over here is another x, right? And this is x because a square all sides are equal. So really, the perimeter of the square is going to be x plus x plus x plus x. Now, that's a lot of x's to write. So we could just say, you know, maybe it's just 4 times x because we have 4 x's. That would be a better way to express the perimeter. Now, the triangle, the perimeter of the triangle is going to be x plus x plus 1 plus 3x minus 5. So if the perimeter of the square is equal to the perimeter of the triangle, well, we can build ourselves a lovely equation because when you have a, a variable, you can't solve for that variable unless you have an equation. And, of course, we have all the information uh, we need to build out a lovely algebraic equation. So let's go and do that right now. Okay, so here is our perimeter of our square. It's 4x. Remember, it's x plus x plus x plus x. I think I said that. 1, 2, 3, 4. You get the idea. So the perimeter of the square is 4 times x. Now, the perimeter of the triangle uh, is the sum of the three sides of the triangle. So again, that uh, what's uh, x, x plus 1, and 3x minus 5, right? So just kind of go up here. Again, we're talking about x plus x plus 1 and 3x minus 5. Now, we're being told again that the perimeters are equal. So we're going to set the perimeters equal to one another. And now, what are we looking at? We're looking at a lovely algebraic equation. 4x is equal to all of this. And uh, kind of the goal now is to solve for x. All right, so let's go and get into that right now. And first things first, first we're going to clear up, uh, you know, this expression. Or we're not clear up, we're going to kind of just, you know, tidy it up by combining like terms. We have a lot of x's here and numbers. So when you're solving uh, linear equations, and that's what this is, this is kind of basic algebra, uh, we have an x here, or really one x. Okay, so when you see an x or a y, uh, in front of that is always a 1. Okay, so if you're getting questioned, like, hey, is there a number in front of that? Yes, indeed, there is 1. But it's not, uh, you know, typically, this is we won't write 1x. Okay, it's an x, but you need to know that there is a 1 in front of that. So there, here's 1x here. We have, and we can kind of drop these parentheses right here. Okay, the parentheses were pl uh, plugged in. You can group things together, right? So mathematically, it's okay for me to drop these parentheses. you got to be careful um, um, when you do drop parentheses because you can have a distributive property situation. But in this case, we're all adding, so I'm just going to drop them so we can focus in on combining like terms and numbers. All right, so let me kind of erase this right here. All right, so we have a 1x here, a 1x here, and a 3x here. So 1x plus 1x plus 3x is a total of 5x. And then, of course, we have a positive 1 plus a negative 5. That gives me a negative 4. And then on the left-hand side, we just simply have a 4x. Okay, so now we have 4x is equal to 5x minus 4. So we want to solve 4x. Well, there's a couple of different things you could do here. Uh, you know, some of you that are more experienced in algebra, 
I could subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. That's perfectly fine. But typically, we like to put our variables on the left-hand side of the equation and our numbers on the right. Either way, it's going to work out. But uh, here, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just subtract 5x from both sides of the equation, right? So I'm going to get all my variables together. And when I add down, I'm going to get 4x plus a negative 5x. That's negative 1x. Got to be very careful with these positive and negative values. So this is negative uh, x or negative 1x equal to negative 4. Okay, so here it looks like we're done, but we're not done because we're solving for x, not negative x. So how do I get a positive x? Easy. All I have to do is divide uh, both sides of the equation by negative 1. So negative x divided by negative 1 is a positive x, and negative 4 divided by negative 1 is a positive 4. Okay, so x is equal to 4. Now, if you recall, our figure uh, figures here with our uh, triangle and square involve uh, x, right? So now that we have the value, can actually go ahead and answer the question by plugging in x for these respective uh, variable expressions. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just like the way I kind of uh, sneak that in? You're probably saying to yourself, this guy just can't wait to say, hey, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And you would be right. That's a terrible little, um, but I, you know, I think I'm looking more like this. <laughs> and let me erase that question mark. But uh, anyways, I like to have fun when I'm teaching math. That's one of the great advantages for me to teach on YouTube. I can kind of, you know, uh, you know, just be myself, right? So if you're, oftentimes, uh, some of you may not realize this, probably a lot of you don't, uh, teachers who teach in a uh, classroom, especially like in public school settings or colleges, you know, they kind of have to follow a standard uh, way of teaching, all right? There is a whole, you know, uh, method, procedures, lesson plans. It's a big deal to be a classroom teacher, and there's a lot of good reasons behind following a kind of certain method or a certain standard format. But for me, my format is, uh, you know, I kind of throw all this, you know, style of teaching out the window, not because it's not good, it's because I can kind of just, you know, be more at ease. And my objective is to try to explain math. There's a big difference between teaching and explaining, okay? So explaining is like, hey, if you don't understand something, you're gonna turn to your friend and say, hey, what did that person say? Can you explain that to me? You're not gonna say, can you teach that to me? Well, you might say that, but really what you mean is explain. And that's what I try to do is teach math in simple to understand language. So if you're struggling in math, I'm telling you right now, there is hope, but you need to get great math instruction. So hopefully uh, my videos are helping you out. And if that's the case, I definitely need your support. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well. Now, uh, real quick before we finish this problem up, if any of you out there are struggling in a particular level of math, I'm gonna leave links to my main math courses in the description of this video. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and uh, pre-calculus. Now, I actually have many, many more courses than this, but those are special uh, kind of test preparation courses and other type of courses. But these are the course uh, links I'm gonna leave below. But I'm also gonna leave two other links, which is my math foundations course. This is just a quick basic math review and my math skills rebuilder course. This course is for those of you that are not math students, but just need a good overall kind of uh, basic review um, of math from found, you know uh, basic mathematics, which would be my uh, foundation course, and a lot of these subjects here. Now, I, won't, don't, I don't really get into too much advanced math in my math skills rebuilder course, but if you take this course, and you know, all my courses are self-paced, you're gonna have a you know pretty good overview of these concepts. Uh, it kind of can set you up for pre-calculus. Pre-calculus, that course is pretty challenging. That is, uh, you know, t it's uh, often said uh, that pre-calculus, a lot of students actually say this, I've heard this through the years, is that pre-calculus is actually harder than calculus, all right? I've, I've heard that say pre-calculus is a pretty tough course. Uh, calculus is a completely different realm. But anyways, I don't want to go off on too many tangents. Let's get back to the problem. Thank you for giving me a little bit of time to explain, uh, you know, uh, my channel and what I do or why I do what I do. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. This is going to be pretty easy now. So x is equal to 4, right? So we solved this equation. So if x is equal to 4, all we have to do is replace these x's with 4. So x is equal to 4, all right, so this is a 4 by 4 square. Remember, all the sides of the square are 4, and then this side of the triangle is going to be 4, and this side here is going to be what? Well, x is 4, this is going to be 4 plus 1, or 5, and then here, if I plug in a 4, that's going to be what? 3 times 4, 12 minus 5, which, of course, is 7. 
So here is all that lovely work right here with the triangle. So we have four, five, and seven. Now let's suppose we do this problem and you are still maybe in doubt. You're like, hmm, I'm not sure if I did this right. Well, we can use the fact that the perimeters are equal. So let's go ahead and just check that real quick. So if, uh, if we have the, uh, a square and the sides of the square are four, well, we can check the perimeter. It's gonna be what? Four plus four plus four plus four, or four times four. So the perimeter here is 16. And then here on this triangle, we have four plus five. That's nine, nine plus seven. If my arithmetic is sharp today, I think that's 16 as well. So the perimeters check out. Okay, so again, just a, a real simple illustration of how algebra and geometry go together like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, you know, uh, one subject, you know, as you progress in math, let me just kind of leave you with this comment here. Uh, people think that, you know, math, you learn it in, uh, you know, independent kind of silos. That's not the case, okay? When you learn basic elementary mathematics or arithmetic, that follows you into like pre-algebra and algebra. Algebra is effectively doing arithmetic with variables. That's, you know, not a bad maybe description of it. So you need your basic math skills. And then you have to have your algebra skills when you get into geometry, okay? Because a lot of geometry problems uh, require algebra to solve them, all right? And then you need all of this stuff as you progress in to, uh, you know, progress into more advanced math. So the key is this, when you learn math, don't forget what you learn, right? You know, and that's why if you are a serious math student, one of the things that you definitely want to do is take great math notes. Don't sh uh, throw away your notes when you're done with the course, especially if you have any intention of continuing to learn mathematics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.